I paddle my little kayak into a dense stand of cypress trees. It's almost like entering a natural cathedral. Thin rays of light filter through the canopy, as if through stained glass windows. Everything even sounds different here. The songs of warblers and other birds echo through the trees, as if in a large, confined space. While the swamp may seem like a scary, dangerous place for some, for me, it is a place of refuge, with an almost sacred quality. I come here often to paddle my kayak and escape from work and the stress of modern life. Remini Swamp is also known as Sparkleberry Swamp, a vast stretch of flooded forest that stands at the northwestern end of Lake Marion. Here in the swamp, the mighty Congaree and Watery Rivers come together to form the Santee River, which drains much of the South Carolina watershed. In fact, the Santee Cooper River Basin is the second largest watershed on the Atlantic coast. Here, nearly 300 species of birds, including bald eagles, osprey, warblers, woodpeckers, and wading birds call the swamp their home. Many of these birds, particularly warblers, need large unbroken blocks of deep forest. Rimini is also home to the East's largest colony of yellow-crowned night herons. The last verified sightings of the ivory-billed woodpecker, long feared extinct, we're in the Santee Swamp in the 1930s. The Rimini Swamp is also home to 125 species of fish, including the first known population of landlocked striped bass. One of these species, the short-nosed sturgeon, is endangered. Alligators and snakes share the waters of the swamp, and raccoons, deer, and wild pigs roam its banks. Rimini Swamp is an important habitat. One would think that this place, which seems so old and mystical, must be a holdover from an ancient time. However, that's not the case. The swamp, as it is now, is relatively recent. It has been a place of human habitation for thousands of years. Names like Santee and Congaree give indication that the original inhabitants of the area were Native Americans. Colonists also found the Santee River Basin to be a fertile ground for plantations and farming. Unfortunately, they also brought smallpox, which wiped out the Congaree tribes by the 1700s. Francis Marion carried out his raids during the Revolutionary War from the dense cypress forests, earning him the name Swamp Fox. Lake Marion now bears his name. After the Civil War, the large farms and plantations were in decline. This part of South Carolina was impoverished. Land was cheap. In the late 19th century, two Chicago businessmen, Francis Beidler and Benjamin Ferguson, established the Santee River Cypress Lumber Company. They purchased over 165,000 acres along the banks of the Congaree, Watery, and Santee Rivers. For over 30 years, trees were cut from the swamps and hauled down to the new town of Ferguson for processing. The lumber was then shipped all over the state and beyond. However, prosperity didn't last. Even before the Great Depression hit the rest of the nation, things were not good for South Carolina. Timber prices fell, and eventually the Ferguson Lumber Company folded. The town of Ferguson became a ghost town and was eventually swallowed back into the cypress forest. As the Great Depression took hold of the rest of the nation, President Franklin Roosevelt established the Works Progress Administration, or WPA. One of its most ambitious projects was the Santee Cooper Project, which would provide electricity and new waterways for commerce by creating two lakes, Lake Moultrie and Lake Marion.
The project got underway in 1934 and created 12,000 jobs, over 9,000 of those for South Carolinians who really needed the work. It was the nation's largest land clearing project. However, the project wasn't great for everyone. Landowners were uprooted from lands that had been in their families for generations. Most of these were not rich plantation owners. Many were poor subsistence farmers who lost their livelihoods along with their land. The lake basins were cleared of timber beginning with Lake Moultrie. Lumber was cleared and the stumps were bulldozed. However, when the project began working on clearing Lake Marion, unrest in Europe was causing concern in the United States leading up to World War II. The country needed electricity and needed it fast. The truest bright spot was called San T. Cooper. With PWA funds and labor paid for by the WPA, the San T. Cooper system was built and began delivering electric power to the low country. Their idea was to cut the trees down, get the stumps and the tops and everything out of there. He says, forget about that. Cut the trees down or leave them standing. It don't make any, any difference. Says, uh, we want that lake filled up. So that, that was the number one priority at that time. Says, get that lake filled up. We need the electricity. Power plant's first customer was a company producing material to strengthen the steel used in the construction of America's battle fleet. The result was that the cypress forests in the upper reaches of Lake Marion were left largely intact. The forests had already been logged during the Ferguson lumber era, but these were starting to recover. However, there was a difference. Now the forests were permanently flooded by the rising waters of the lake. Lake Marion became a paradise for sportsmen. The forests recovered and fishing became a treasured activity. The Santee Cooper power plant began providing power for the area, including power for industries necessary for the war effort. An old growth cypress forest from the former Beidler Ferguson tracts located along the Congaree River was preserved and eventually became the Congaree National Park. It seemed that the forests of the Santee were also safe, yet there were still threats to the forest. As the years passed, the upper reaches of Lake Marion did not prosper as well as the open water areas of the lake. The farming town of Lone Star dried up and became a ghost town. On the other side of the lake, the community of Rimini never really developed into a town. In 1997, Congressman Jim Clyburn proposed a bridge linking the two communities. The idea was that a bridge would open up this section of the lake for development and better economic times for these impoverished communities. Almost immediately, there was backlash against the bridge proposal. Some said that it was a waste of money. Others called it unnecessary, a bridge to nowhere. Still others were upset about the potential harm to the Rimini Swamp environment. Development along the banks of the lake would most surely mean the loss of more cypress trees and swamp habitat. Proponents of the bridge countered these arguments by saying that the current swamp environment wasn't a natural swamp, but only existed because of the flooding of Lake Marion. Others said that the largely African-American population would be placed at further disadvantage if the bridge were not built, couching arguments in terms of civil rights. In 2003, approval for the bridge was granted by the South Carolina Department of Transportation and the Federal Highway Administration. The proposed bridge was named the Briggs Delane Pearson Connector honoring local families involved in the Briggs v. Elliott school desegregation lawsuit. It looked like the bridge was on the fast track for construction. In 2005, South Carolina Wildlife, the Coastal Conservation League, and Audubon, South Carolina sued both the Department of Transportation and Federal Highway Administration to stop the bridge. 
In 2007, the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control denied a key water quality permit needed by the Department of Transportation to move forward with the construction. As of today, the bridge's future is still undecided. Congress has authorized $26.5 million of the estimated $150 million project. The lawsuits are as of yet unresolved. This controversy pits economic concerns against those that would like to preserve the current habitat. There's no doubt that if the bridge moves forward, things will change for Remini Swamp. How these changes will manifest themselves have yet to be seen. Until that time, I will continue to enjoy the solitude and communion with nature that I enjoy by paddling through the swamp every chance I get.